Welcome back. This is Steven Fox and Techfly bringing you the next review of the Ukitil U13. Again, as usual, I start with the unboxing. This is a very typical box for Yukito. They like their orange color a lot. And uh, this is practically the cheapest 64 gigabyte storage phone you can find. With maybe the best front and back cam combination. At that price, it's just a $120 phone. Metal build, very, very good build quality. Fingerprint scan that works really well. And uh, this is a micro USB port, dual SIM and 5.5 full, glorious full HD display. Now the button and volume rocker you will notice are on the left side. The phone does feel quite good to hold in the hand and uh, it's very light being made of metal but it's light so it's not heavy and in the package you just get your standard USB charger and cable. It's a micro USB cable not USB type C and also a warranty card and uh, book pamphlet for the U13. Now let's get on with the first boot and show you what this phone can do. Now this takes quite a bit of long time to boot the first time, but as you can see I'll just show you fingerprint sensor works really well from the get-go, no problems there. You can see it's a very very good build phone. It's, it has actually a slight curve on the back which makes it very very natural to hold in the hand. It fits great in your palm and you do get your app drawer for those who want it. This is running uh, Basically very close to stock version of Android, absolutely no bloatware on it, uh, it just has the Zaza remote because it has an infrared blaster on the on the top where you can control your AC, TV and all sorts of things. And it does have FM radio model so you can listen to your radio with your headphones and uh, you can change the, of course, the on-screen buttons which is really nice some you know system motions like pick up to answer to just a screenshot you know how to do your clip screen by holding the back button it's a glorious 64 gigabyte of storage device i've taken lots of photos installed like six seven games in there and still got four gigs free you can also use uh, parallel space that they've put in there so you can use multiple accounts on facebook or whatsapp or whatever you want in the same phone so this is cool if uh, you like to use it as a work and uh, a personal phone at the same time but don't mix it up and here you can uh, use the fingerprint scanner to take photos answer calls uh, move the browser to images and uh, play music and video files here's a quick registration of the fingerprint no problem it's not the fastest fingerprint sensor i've worked with but it's quite accurate so it just takes uh, like um, around half a second to open the screen which is quite nice no problem as you can see it works in the gallery absolutely fantastic no issues there and I'll just take a few photos with it and you can see the photos are taken very well and uh, uh, the triggers of RAM does help multitasking is quite good on this device and uh, as you can check very very good it's, uh, lots of languages the multi-language ROM and uh, you do get your proximity sensor and you can use it for a lot of things as well and uh, here is the basic info of the device the build number cams and of course Winning 6 on marshmallow now what you could have done is they've provided an IR blaster which is great and the Zaza remote which is a very universal app where people use it they don't build their own app they just use this one and it's great for controlling all your infrared devices like ACs uh, TV boxes TVs and it works really well I've tried on my AC and my smart TV really well and this uh, and of course you can see the bands it's 1, 3, 7, 8 and of course band 20 for the European Union so all you guys in the EU can uh, rejoice for having 4G on this phone really nice and uh, just uh, it's a dual sim but only one sim slot supports 4G this is just a 3G one and the score is quite okay for this chip around Snapdragon 430 level which is expected at this price still no problem in browsing and multitasking storage speeds are excellent very very fast storage on this device and uh, I just wish the battery was bigger because uh, it you can just get around three three and a half four hours on screen time on a single charge I feel the need the need for speed Ow! 
far as multitasking goes, tricks of RAM is plenty for you in all your social apps and a few tabs on Google Chrome on the background, as you can see. Uh, the phone doesn't tend to reload apps, which is great. Uh, so RAM management has been done pretty well on this device. And uh, apps launch very quickly, of course, and uh, you don't have support for Google Camera, so you can use uh, the camera for the depth of good depth of field, the wide aperture mode like in Huawei to get some really cool shots if you don't like the stock cam app, but I'll get that a bit later. And uh, here is all your social apps running, no problem, one by one, and I'll switch to them just so you can see that it doesn't reload most of them. And uh, of course, what can we do about without Facebook, of course. And of course, here it is, uh, very, very stock-like multitasking from the device. You can see switching between all your social apps, nothing is reloading, everything's working quite well. Um, I've actually loaded quite a bit of apps in there and uh, for a few pages of Google Chrome, I still had like 900 megabytes free RAM. So I said, app management is really good on the device. Um, no problems browsing, watching videos, uh, absolutely uh, top-notch performance at this price. Uh, it's uh, it's an okay for gaming as well, just, uh, you know, the heaviest games will lag a bit. This is, af after all, an older chip, but for general usage, for multitasking, it's still very, very good. I'd say it's even better than the Snapdragon 430 in the CPU department. You see, no problem, Google Chrome was really well. On it, absolutely no issues whatsoever. And now it's next to the YouTube and the sound tests, and I'll be back for the camera test. Very reliable, very quick, and very accurate. I have some hardware info for you. This is the first phone set with Helio P10. This is the latest mid range uh, SOC or system on chip from uh, MediaTek. And uh, the phone. Welcome back to management, I guess. But uh, in real life, performance is not that bad. This is a, a great, great performing chip. And for day to day usage, you probably most of. So we get to one of the main features of the device besides the huge storage space, uh, which is great. And this is the front end dual cam combo. And um, both sensors you provide by Omnivision, but the lenses are quite good on this device. It's a 16 megapixel back cam with a 12 megapixel front cam. And I think they're both interpolated uh, from 13 and from uh, 8 or 9.5 respectively. Uh, focus speed is quite fast on this device, even in uh, less lighting conditions. I was expecting worse, but the, the camera is actually very, very good at this price. I say one of the better cams you can get. Um, macro mode also, it's uh, it's very good. You can cl very, very well close up shots on the subjects. The camera doesn't uh, stray from focusing, uh, and this is a problem for even higher end devices. So kudos to Kittel for that. HDR photos take a bit longer to get in, but there's a bit more light. You can see plenty of detail, no problem. Focusing works really well. I said even in lower lighting condition, focusing is still quite fast, uh, but HDR takes a bit longer. I do recommend using HDR in low, low light shots because it will get more light in. Now the sensor is f2.2 aperture, but the pixels are a bit bigger, so even in low light, it just gets very good shots. 
and so you can see there's some noise of course can, this can be expected this is with and without the HDR shots but this is in very very dark conditions outside with just uh, uh, just a very vague street lamps working uh, and this is inside the office in good lighting as you can see very very good details um, I just uh, believe that the photos colors can be a little bit more accurate they do look a, a little bit washed out a bit on the a more brownish uh, bluish side but uh, I think that can be fixed with the software update and it's not a very big problem and uh, here it is no no problem with uh, focusing in macro shots very very good it uh, even provides a bokeh effect for you bokeh effect lovers this is a very good camera combination for this price and um, it does offer optical image stabilization but it's not that great I mean uh, don't expect Samsung like optical image stabilization but video and photos even with a little bit shaking this do turn out okay this is the macro shot as you can see absolutely stunning details for a 120 dollar phone great great camera combo there's just a bit of noise in the photos when uh, light is a bit lower but I can tell you and when you put it on the PC it looks okay just I really like it very very good camera and the front cam is also really really good for the price uh, in good lighting conditions absolutely great selfies no problem whatsoever and um, even the front cam video is 720p but it's still very very good quality much better than what I've seen from uh, Doji, Blue Boo, Elephone, blah blah and other you know cheap brands uh, you can tell my provides uh, a phone that's uh, that's good in the price category but it's good build quality and they've definitely made a very good effort on the camera and uh, 64 gigs of storage at that price is uh, simply unheard of you can see great great amounts of detail in the front cam especially when using HDR to get all the light in and so you could check front cam video is also really good as well now uh, when I got this phone it's like minus 15 outside so and really really heavy snow so you see most of the photos are <laughs> have snow in them a lot and this is the macro shot I took this is a photo from outside it's an um, it's a it was a cloudy day but uh, very very good details and here's a shot in my house on uh, low lighting conditions very very good quality and here's the selfie I took you can check more photos in the link in my Flickr profile the description below here I am using the front cam of the Yuki 13 and uh, this is where I am at home, uh, lighting is good, let me just step outside for a minute. It's a 720p front cam, it's very cold in here, like minus 15, so I'll just pop him right back. So, you can get a good look at it, it's in the final review. Now if counts as a gaming test, uh, as I said the MT 6753 is an older chip, it does have a tri-core GPU which is great at running uh, no, not that much GPU intensive games like racing, so asphalt, so real racing 3 will run great and your need for speed, but um, it does struggle when it comes to GPU intensive games like first person shooters as you see later on, games like Unkilled Modern Combat 5 do lag a bit and I recommend you lowering the settings but uh, racing games run just fine and of course your light games and fighters like Marvel Consoles of Champions for instance run really well and uh, I'll leave you to watch the test see for yourself and I'll be back for my final conclusion
So here are my final thoughts. Great build quality, cheapest and fastest storage on the market, great cameras for the price, IR remote, FM radio and band 20 available, but no gyroscope, battery life is okay, not great, and no quick charge supported. Heavy 3D games will lag a bit, but this is a good phone to get, $120, it's one of the best devices you can get on the market if you can stomach a few shortcomings. Hope you enjoyed the review, and if you want more, stick around.